Are we there? We're there. See, I, you know, the signals around here are lousy, but that's all right. I'm David Ingram. You're uh, watching Ingram, which is on every Wednesday night. And if you're watching it live, I'll be surprised because I didn't sound out any notices of this, but most of our people are watching it in archives anyway. And we've just been talking to Rosemary Baron Swingle, who happens to be the owner of Paul Swingle. And Paul Swingle, Dr. Paul Swingle, is, as far as I'm concerned, one of my absolutely favorite, hands down, no, just people in the entire world because he does so much good for people. So Paul, welcome back to Ingram. And, thank you uh, for having me. Thank you for bringing Rosemary. She was just a delight. And I That think, was a fun interview. Well, <laughs> we were, uh, I didn't know what we were going to talk about because it was sort of, we didn't have any time beforehand or anything and she mm. sort of walked up and came up in the house. But Rosemary, you just, you were beaming to the whole thing. It was wonderful. It was fun. So tell me about Paul. See, we got Paul in the middle here now. Uh -oh. <laughs> How did you meet Paul? Where did you meet him? This is, I've stuck this in on you. Oh, you did. I did. I was his student. You were, oh, he had an affair and married a student? Paul. Well, that's okay. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. You were a student. So, did you take psychology? I'm sorry, David. That's as much as you'll get out That's of all it. I'm going to get out of here? That's right. But then you married him. And you followed him to Halifax. <laughs> That's right. His first academic appointment was Halifax, Nova Scotia, Dalhousie University. And so, as a consequence, you got East Coast experience. And then what did you do with Paul? You took him to Boston or something? I said, that's enough, David. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you going to tell what happened, Paul? You went from Dalhousie to Boston? You went to well, Ottawa? We went from uh, Dalhousie to McGill. Oh, McGill. I didn't know and about McGill. McGill to McMaster, and McMaster to University of Ottawa. And while I was at University of Ottawa, uh, we had a second residence in Boston. Rosemary was director of a uh, art institute over there, and I got myself uh, a position at, uh, as you know, psychiatry at Harvard Medical School. So we were chugging back and forth between Ottawa and Boston for the better part of 10 years on a weekly basis. So you were actually working at Mc at University of Ottawa, and Harvard University, and was there McLean University Hospital in there someplace McLean, too? McLean, uh, that's where I was stationed, was McLean Hospital, which is the teaching hospital, the psychiatric teaching hospital of Harvard Medical School. Well, that's pretty good credentials. And while you're doing this, Rosemary is the director of an art institute in Boston, and she's doing stuff at Carleton University as well. Is that no, what I'm no, hearing? No, I was, she, I was doing... She stayed in Boston. <laughs> I was doing graduate work in Boston. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was, as Paul said, the director of an art institute. And I was also um, doing work which has a little something to do with my gallery for Action for Boston Community Development, which was a community organization. And I had a great deal to do with the literacy program in Boston. Well, and your daughter, Mari, mm -hmm. has a lot to do with literacy, too, because she teaches pe people to read. That's right. She taught Mitchell how to spell. Mitchell claims he can't spell. and I Oh, he can spell. He's I he had a big to-do with him a few days ago. I said, you certainly can spell. <laughs> no. Well, we all, we all fall down in not spelling every word perfectly, right? Absolutely. But I had somebody, but I saw yes, some... that's what uh, Mari does, using you know, the neurotherapy to uh, help the kids to learn how to read. And how to write. Your, her, the shows that I've seen her do, and she was here when we did one. But, uh, the, oh, that's right. She, the showed show, you she was here, and she yeah. showed us the difference between mm -hmm. the handwriting of somebody before they start treatment mm -hmm. and after they start treatment. It's and pretty remarkable. Uh, yeah. And you, I credit with, you know, I got, I've never asked you about this book before. Does it something, have you followed this book at all? That's the, uh, you know, the one I think that really captures it, that... Uh, kids that have ADD 
uh, everybody thinks they're just lazy and stupid and, you know, it, that it's a volitional thing, that they're choosing not to uh, pay attention or they're choosing to be lazy or they're choosing to avoid things. And in fact, it's a neurological condition that they're fighting. Correct the neurology of it and it goes away. You And you, I can still remember, and I referred to it with uh, Rosemary a while ago, but everybody that watches this isn't going to be watching that interview or whatever you like to think that everything we do is the whole world's watching. But, you know, I remember one time Gary Bannerman, my good friend, came in and said something about that his audience had hit 33,000 people that day or something. I said, that oh, means 977,000 people weren't watching or weren't That's listening. Right. <laughs> you, know, it, you know, it depends on what you do with statistics. But you and I, and I'm going to bring uh, people in because you rarely ever mention clients, and I understand that because you can't. Um, you don't even like telling stories about people because somebody might recognize the circumstances. Mm -hmm. So... You and I are both stuck with this concept of, unless that's something like great tax stories, I can't tell because it would identify. <coughs> and I have a favorite one where I answered a question for somebody in a city, and I changed the city to Victoria, I changed the occupation to a florist, I changed the age by, t I changed everything in this question. And would you believe that a lady in Victoria phoned Gave phone and gave me hell. How did I find out about her situation? Mm. It was I had her fit to a T, and I completely and totally identify her. Another time in BC Business Magazine, I wrote a story about executives getting transferred. Six people phoned up and complained that I used their personal mm -hmm. situation. So this stuff. But I've had a couple of people. Um, Dr. Strathy, a uh, lady that teaches at the University of San Diego phoned and said, I am welcome to use her name because when I met her and she was talking about, we were talking about tax, and she said something about her son, I said, hold on, I don't care what we do, I don't care if it costs you $100,000 in tax, you get your son in to see Paul. And she did, all the way from San Diego, and she phoned me the other day to tell me that I was right, that your treatments, and that's the treatments of you and your staff, that you don't cheat everybody, but she phoned me to tell me that your treatments were made such a difference to their son and her husband and herself and their family relationships and everything, and I get little shivers in my back when I think about all the people that we've, and we've had. We had Karen on talk on the other program mm -hmm. talking about her son and what a difference she had made. We had four of your students on, Ingram, and we got to get that program up on here. You have a copy of it, I think. Because Paul Swingo, who I've just beat around the bush right here, and about where he came from and where he met his wife and all the rest of it, is a world-renowned brain man. You've just been inducted into a brain hall of fame or something, rather. What's that story? Uh, they started uh, a museum of uh, the old equipment that was used to change brain activity, you know, the old electric shock therapy things oh, yes. and all kinds of things. And associated with that institution is uh, the Hall of the Biofeedback and Brain uh, Hall of Fame. And uh, it just started this year and I'm one of the inaugural inductees along with guys that go back 30 years and, uh, you know, who, the fellow that actually uh, discovered uh, brain activity. Uh, so I was very pleased with that. Well, you discovered sound health, didn't you? <clears throat> yes, the use of, uh, of uh, sub-threshold harmonics to change brain activity, brain driving is something that uh, in fact, that's why I was inducted to the Hall of Fame. I was the originator of the brain-driving concept in uh, changing... Which is now being used around the world. Uh, we're giving workshops online every month around the world. And you are in Vancouver. About, what, 1177 Melville? 1166 Melville? What is it? 1190 Melville. 1190 Melville. Mm -hmm. In the Whalen building, the one with the whale on the that's side right, that you yeah. can't see anymore. Um, we're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a couple of minutes. Uh, David Ingram with Dr. Paul Swingle, and his wife Rosemary is sitting beside him. We just interviewed about a New York gallery. We'll be back in a couple of seconds.